What the f- I have a reflection here. Duterte, ilalaglag na, smartmatic, disqualified, at Marcos, amnestia. Come, 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 stop for me. This is a war. Joseph, and welcome to New Siding Worthy Recap Weekly Edition number 27. We have tons and tons to cover for the 5th week of November 2023. So skip the times as provided if it piques your interest. Tipagandana for the Blazing Selective Summation. Here are some PH News commentary for your convenience. Marcus thinking of allowing ICC in the Philippines. In a recent interview, President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcus Jr. had been thinking of rejoining the International Criminal Court which led to some speculation regarding his stance on letting the ICC investigate the alleged extrajudicial killings on Duterte's War on Drugs campaign in his six-year stint as the President of the Philippines. He had the unilateral control of the legislative and the executive branch of the government. Katulad ni BBM ngayon, parang unilateral at uh, basically aligned or rubber stamp na lang ang Kongreso at Senado sa mga gustong gawin ng Presidente ng Pilipinas. Kumbaga wishy-washy siya sa diskusyon tungkol sa pagpapapasok sa International Criminal Court para i-prosecute at investigahan ang war on drugs ni Duterte noong 6-year term niya as the President of the Philippines. Lalo na si Marcos ay isa sa labing siyam ayata na or bumotong magratipika ng Rome Statute na naging basehan ng International Criminal Court's jurisdiction sa Pilipinas noong panahon niya as a senator in the Philippines. Kumagay sa siya sa mga subulong para papasukin ang ICC or at least magkaroon ng jurisdiction ang ICC para maybe beyond our justice system's capability. Tulad na lang ni Duterte or at least that's what they are claiming Duterte is. Especially since Duterte left the ICC on I think 2017 or 2016 because of the rambling of investigations regarding his anti-drug campaigns in the Philippines. Bagawat hindi outright sinabi na hahayaan niya ang ICC na investigahan si Duterte, sinabi niyang pinag-iisipan ng kanyang administrasyon ang pagbalik ng bansa sa nasabing institusyon. Maraming nagsaspeculate na unti-unti nang nabubuwag ang tambalang Marcos Duterte aka The Uni Team dahil sa bangayan ng dalawang kampo from Marcos snubbing Sara Duterte's wish to become the Defense Secretary instead placing her in the Education Department which is absolutely a civil department and not a military where Duterte was vying for at least appointment. Duterte's uneasiness with Marcos, and by Duterte, I mean like former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, just because, you know, sinuportahan din ng nanay ni Duterte, sila ni Noy at Cory sa kanilang laban sa Reming Marcos. Not to mention yung mga sinabi ko tungkol sa the fact that Duterte was a yellow, or at least, which also meant, sinuportahan niya si Pinoy sa kanyang campaign, and ni Noy the same as him. Sano Duterte leaving Marcos's and Romualdez's Lakas Christian Muslim Democrats, or Lakas CMD party seemingly in protest of snubbing former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo from House Speakership, subsequently demoting the kingmaker that led to the landslide election in 2022 from Senior Deputy Speaker to just Deputy Speaker, and Sara Duterte's controversial con- confidential fund issue with Rodrigo Duterte's tirade against the Congress when they stripped his daughter of like 650 million pesos in confidential fund, alleging collusion and corruption in the House of Representatives, lalo na ngayon yung SMN na iniimbestigahan rin ng Kongreso dahil sa alleged, I think libel? No, it's slander. An anchor of the SMNI News Channel or Sunshine Media News Network or something where they alleged or at least they said na the House leadership like Romualdez and all that stuff has around 2 billion peso worth of travel expenses. At sinabi na lang yung source nila is nasa Senado. Kaya talaga naglalaban ngayon yung mga Duterte or at least si Duterte, the former President Rodrigo Duterte at ang Kongreso dahil kinalaban ng Kongreso yung confidential fund ni Sara Duterte dahil nga sa mga backlash na nakukuha nila sa mga netizens at basically sa kanilang mga constituents. Not to mention 650 million pesos. I mean, I understand the 500 million pesos para sa VP pero 150 million pesos sa DepEd. As I said, you know, she, she should have done like for the first year maybe 50 
100 blah 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 blah. Don't outright do it all at once. Nag-file pa nga ng resolusyon yung House of Representatives to uphold the integrity of the House of Representatives. Clearly declared against Rodrigo Duterte. Numerous political mainstays and officials may greeting from Duterte's Partido Democratico Pilipino Laban or PDP Laban to Marcos's Lakas CMD and Arroyo's demotion. As I said, kasi nga noong una, kumaga na, nasnub si Gloria Macbal Arroyo to be the House Speaker. Kapalit ng pinsan ni Marcos na si Romualdez kung saan na-demote siya from Senior Deputy Speaker tapos na-demote ulit siya to just Deputy Speaker tapos ngayon nung na-demote ulit si Arroyo from Deputy Speaker to just a representative of Pampanga after she failed to show support and sign the resolution targeted against Duterte kung mag sabi nila well kung hindi mo sa sign or at least hindi mo i-voice yung support mo dito sa resolusyong nag uphold ang integrity na House of Representatives amid attacks or tirades against its institution, hindi ka namin papayagan na maging speaker, at least even a deputy speaker, ng nasabing institusyon kasi nga, you obviously does not support our cause. Ang dami nangyari these past few months, lalo na sa legislatura, I mean yung dating nasa honeymoon phase na Marcos sa Duterte tandem, biglang nagkalumot at ngayon yung mukhang malapit na mag-file ng annulment or divorce. Pero you know, 2028 pa naman ang next election or at least yung presidential election. So, we'll see. Noong unay mariin ang stance ni Marcos sa kanyang desisyon na hindi papasukin ng International Criminal Court sa Pilipinas upang investigahan ang di umunoy extrajudicial killings at mass murders sa kasagsagan ng Duterte's war on drugs. Isa pa sa mga nag echo ng sentiment na ito ay ang ating Justice Secretary Crispin Remulla at most recently si Sara Duterte mismo na talagang adamant on the fact that even though nasa discretion daw ni Marcos yung pagpapapasok sa ICC it will be on the best interest of the people if she means by the people his father na hindi papasokan yung ICC na yung kat naman ang diskusyon patungkol sa ICC nang makalaya on bail ang napakulong na political opponent ni former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte na si dating Commissioner on Human Rights Chairperson na nag-investiga sa di umanong Davao Death Squad noong 2009 sa pumumuno ng then mayor of Davao City. Dating Justice Secretary ni Pinoy at chairperson ng Senate Justice Committee na nag investiga sa summary killing sa mga personalidad at suspects ng terorismo at droga. nag rin at pumasa sa review ang resolusyon na humihikayat sa Pangulo na papasukin ang ICC sa bansa galing sa House of Representatives na final ni na Manila 6th District Representative Bienvenido Abante and One Rider Representative Ramon Rodrigo Gutierrez na nag underline ang duty ng ating bansa upang i-uphold ang human rights at the rule of law sa Pilipinas. Ikinasurpresa rin ng Senado ang pagsasabit ni Senator Riza Ontiveros ng isang resolusyon na katulad ng nasa House of Representatives ay nag-urge o humihikaya sa administrasyon na payagang mag-imbestiga ang International Criminal Court sa alleged mass murderers at extrajudicial killings ng administrasyong Duterte. You all know my stance on this. I believe Marcos should not let the ICC prosecute former President Rodrigo Duterte on his alleged crimes. Since mahina si Duterte ngayon sa politika dahil sa kanyang pakikipagbakbakan sa legislatura at not to mention wala ng tao sa PDP laban at wala na rin siya sa pwesto, particularly the House of Representatives, mas madaling mauusad ang kaso laban sa kanya. I mean, let our justice system handle it. At kapag nagbigay na ng hatol na ang ating justice system, particularly if it is a negative outcome for the prosecuted, then and only then should we let ICC prosecute our leaders after we have already prosecuted them with our justice system. Kasi nga yung katulad ng ICC, a designated international criminal court na somehow has the jurisdiction over these lands will be out of the question lest the people be sympathetic to, to Duterte and they most likely will. It will only be seen as the self-serving interest of an imperial interventionist foreign body dictating the locals of their options. Kumbaga, if ibang tao or at least foreign body ang nagjudge at nagprosecute kay Duterte, well, mas lalo pang mapupunta ang tao or at least magiging nostalgic pa sila lalo sa mga populist at isolationist leaders katulad ni Duterte and probably even more. Puring Duterte in an international tribunal will only create distrust in the government dahil Duterte is still a really popular leader today. At kung ipagkakanulon lang ng gobyerno si Duterte sa mga puti at foreigners, abay mas lalo mag 
magdududa ang bansa sa gobyerno, risking another populist leader at isolationist leader like Duterte, but a few times more effective. Napakalaking bad precedent ang pagbigay kay Duterte sa mga foreigners kung hindi man lang siya husgahan ng husgato sa ating bansa, lalo na if they found him guilty, of which he most likely will be. Here are some more PH news for your convenience. Smartmatic disqualified. Sa isang resolusyon na ipinoblish ng Comelec on Bank, like in full jurisdiction, naggrant ang petition ng ilang grupo, kaug na ito sa one IP address kerfuffle at ilang ugong-ugong upang ma-overturn ang election dahil sa di umanoy widespread fraud at anomalya sa 2022 election na nagresulta sa landslide victory ng Uni Team Marcos Duterte Tandem at ang seeming di unilateral government. Isa pang dahilan kung bakit na-disqualified ang Smartmatic sa pag operate sa nasabing Senate congressional at local elections para sa 2025 ay dahil hindi raw ma-review ang qualifications nila pati na yung mga anomalya at patong-patong na kaso or at least magpatong ng kaso ng United States laban sa dating Comelec chairperson Andy Bautista at Smartmatic alleging like collusion at bribery. Ifinal ang petition para i-disqualify ang Smartmatic sa paparating na democratical electoral process dahil sa dumis ng integridad ng nasabing pooling company at ang mga agam-agam sa kanilang integridad at pulisiya, especially public consciousness at, you know, general distrust. Pinitisyon ang disqualifikasyon ng Smartmatic na former Comelec Commissioner Augusto Lagman, dating DICT Secretary at Comelec Advisory Council Chairperson Eliseo Rio Jr., former Financial Executive Institute of the Philippines or Phoenix President Franklin Isaac, at retired Colonel Leonardo Odonio. This is a good move by the Comelec because we don't want the people to doubt the electoral process considering kahit na isang bulong lamang ng kolusyon will result in a pretty big deal of a kerfuffle. Just look at what happened in America on January 6, 2021. I mean, push ng push si Trump that the election was stolen, that the mail-in ballots were somehow illegal and the deep state is trying to get rid of him. And if by deep state, he probably means like more than half of the population. You know, at least more than the people that like him. So it'll be best for us to just do that. Not risk the doubt and die being cast regarding this particular company. At least until the cases and doubts are resolved. Marcus grants rebels amnesty. Psh Binigyan ni President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. ang dating separatist rebels and communist insurgents na sumuko sa gobyerno ng amnestia upang mas madali or at least mapadali yung pag integrate nila sa, sa lipunan. I was, I was gonna say society but that doesn't sound right. Ayon sa Proclamation 403, binigyan ni President Marcos Jr. ng amnestia ang mga branded rebel groups na revolutionaryong partido ng manggagawa ng Pilipinas or Revolutionary Proletarian Army, Alex Bocayo Brigade, Bongkayo Brigade, Bongkayo o RPMB RPA ABB. Nice acronym and nice name by the way. Pati na ang Communist Party of the Philippines, New People's Army, National Democratic Front, or CPP and PANDF, which are curiously all labor rights movements and organizations, although ang RPMB, RPA, ADB I actually considered a rejectionist faction of the CPP, NPA, NDF na na-form sa mga tumulag sa Manila Rizal Committee of the New People's Army. It's like the armed wing of the CPP, NPA. Kasama pa sa mga nabigyan ng amnestia sa kanilang pagsuko ang Moro Islamic Liberation Front o MILF, MILF, at Moro National Liberation Front o MNLF na lumalaban sa autonomy or at least for the autonomy ng mga mamamayang Moro. Two factions once united. Dahil sa kanilang pakikibaka at lakas sa Mindanao, Nabuo ang Bangsa Moro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao o BARMM kung saan naggrant ang kanilang petisyon at mithi in nagawing autonomous at independent ang Moro Region sa gobyerno ng Pilipinas na albeit officially secular is unofficially officially undoubtedly Christian, precisely Catholic. The people mostly given amnesty was under the Freedom of Assembly and Political Activism label as crimes committed in pursuit of their political beliefs which 
you can't really fault pero yung crimes I guess even if may amnesty na binigay hindi siya pangkalahatan hindi sakop ng nasabing amnesty ang ma-involve sa kid of ransom massacre rape terrorism crimes committed against chastity like adultery concubinage and other stuff crimes committed for personal ends illegal drugs violation of Geneva Convention which includes like genocide crimes against humanity war crimes torture and forced disappearances at other conventional violation of human rights. So Henry Kissinger, lock that in. Maraming mga grupo ang tumuri sa presidente sa kanyang paggrant ng amnestia sa mga dating rebelde ng RPMB, RPAADB, CPP, and PANDF, MILF, at MNLF. Lagus Nilad Underpass reopens. Binuksan na ang Lagus Nilad sa Maynila matapos ang anim na buwang renovation on the drainage system at general road condition ng famed underpass. Ang road closure ng vital underpass sa Taft Avenue ay naglagay ng malaking pressure sa traffic ng lugar. Ang uling pagbubukas matapos ang anim na buwang rehabilitasyon ng Lagus Nilad ay sinalubong ng galak ng mga mananakay, estudyante at mga motorista. Mali, deceased elephant of Manila Zoo. Pumanaw na ang nag elepante sa Pilipinas na pinangalan ng Mali matapos bunuin ang dekadekadang pagkakakulong este pagiging display sa Manila Zoo as an attraction. Binansagang World's Saddest Elephant si Vishwa Maali na mga animal rights activist na inaregalo sa dating First Lady Imelda Marcos ng Sri Lankan government noong 1981 nang siya'y 11 months old lama. And so, here are some global slash international news for your convenience. Hamas Israeli hostage released after Qatar broken ceasefire. A Qatar brokered ceasefire between the Israeli government and Hamas for four days plus two days plus one day has resulted in dozens of Hamas hostages and Israeli hostages or prisoners to be set free. A momentous undertaking given that there's a lot of distrust between two parties. I mean, there's no scout honors in this type of warfare, lalo na with Israel doing all that kind of stuff and, you know, Hamas being declared as a rebel or at least terrorist organization. A momentous undertaking given that there's a lot of trust between the two parties considering Hamas is branded as a terrorist organization and has killed thousands of people while the Israeli forces have massacred and bombed or at least again killed thousands of people and bombed hospitals and communities in the name of ejecting the Palestinians from their land. Just watch my previous NIDW recaps if you want to. Henry Kissinger dead at 100. Former Secretary of State for both former President Nixon and Ford of the United States of America and world-renowned war criminal has died at the sickly age of 100. Celebrate good times. I mean, if there is a God, or at least a Christian God, he'd probably be in heaven. Now, why am I so hard on this guy? His bombing campaigns with Mutual Cambodia, millions of deaths, and his prolonging of the Vietnam War, dropping figuratively billions of tons of bombs, derailing peace plans, and enhanced U.S. interventionism, along with propping up dictatorships in coup democracies sympathetic to the left and the proletariat. At yan ang pagtatapos ng news, I deem worthy recap weekly edition for roughly the 5th week of November 2023. Most suggest some more topics and or corrections to the balitas if you feel I misrepresented them in any way. Salamat sa mga panonood mga kapayang for me. Like, subscribe, and follow my links and socials on Avoid Joseph that would be linked down below. Susunod so, 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 so,